Different point. Oh, Mr. Chair, I'm interested the to hear. Honourable Dr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd be delighted to ask a question, answer the questions that have been raised by a number of members, and want to begin by saying how much I enjoy debating with members of the Labour opposition and the way in which they want to continuously rewrite history. And my first bit I'd like to do is that the horror that was expressed by the last member over the Sky City Convention Centre. And the problem for the member is that I was sitting on his side of the House when the Helen Clark government bought a bill before the House for, didn't you believe or, it? Or, order, order. I'm going to ask the member to resume his seat and, and I am <laughs> going to ask him, that, I, as I did the member, to relate his comments to the bill. Well, the bill, Mr Speaker, is about construction disputes. And the question I've got from the member is would the sort of disputes that there has been about the construction of the Convention Centre apply to the great new International Convention Centre that John Key and Stephen Joyce have very successfully been able to negotiate for the government? And the answer is with this bill that yes, we are going to extend the dispute resolution process to include the design, the engineering work and the quantity surveying. That would not occur without this bill and the changes in part one. But I also want to assure the member of this, that the design, the engineering and the quantity surveying on the smaller convention centre that was negotiated as a trade-off for casino concessions by Helen Clark, exactly the same deal would also apply to part one provisions of the bill. Now, I think the member has now had two warnings, <laughs> and, and uh, if he would like to continue to speak to part one, I suggest that he does, and, and not uh, relitigate ancient history, uh, which I think it's fair to say <laughs> is not affected whatsoever by the bill. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, Mr Chairman. Mr Chairman, I think it is worthwhile as we debate the changes in part one about the performance of the construction industry and most importantly, I think, is consistency of political parties' position on issues such as construction contracts. Now, Mr Speaker, I've seen the same sort of duplicity when I heard the comments from Mr Clayton Cosgrove. Because Mr Clayton Order. Cosgrove... The member will withdraw the term and apologise. Oh, Mr Speaker, can you clarify what particular term? No, no I no. won't. The member knows absolutely which term. He's an experienced member. I'm happy to apologise to take into account the concerns of the chair. The member will immediately withdraw and apologise unconditionally. Mr Speaker, I unconditionally withdraw and apologise. Mr Chairman. Dr Smith. Mr Chairman, a point was made by Mr Clayton Cosgrove over the issues in part one of this bill that my predecessor, Morris Williamson, had ruled out any changes. That is grossly incorrect. When issues arose around the construction contracts dispute, my predecessor, Morris Williamson, made absolutely plain that there was a significant issue for us to work through in respect of construction contracts. In fact, if you look at the paper trail, it very clearly shows that the very issues that are covered in my SOP were triggered as a consequence of the work that Morris Williamson asked officials to do with the industry. The difference, Mr Chairman, is this, that in the changes that National is proposing in its SOP are changes that have been very carefully thought through, that they're workable, that they'll reduce compliance costs. Yet the SOP that's been tabled by the Labour opposition is not workable. And if you look at the website, and the website for MB has a comprehensive... Please resume. Member will resume his seat. Uh, if the member, if I have to warn the member once more, stay on part one of the bill, I will terminate his speech. As has been pointed out to Mr Cosgrove, his amendment does not relate to this part of the bill. Um... Dr Smith. Uh, Mr Chairman. Point of order. Mr Chair, I'm not questioning your ruling, but I am genuinely confused and seek your elucidation. 
As I understand it, the Minister is currently attempting to respond to questions that were put to him by opposition speakers in their contributions on part one of the bill, and I'm not sure how it is that the Minister has therefore transgressed when he's attempting to answer I'm, I'm questions. I'm happy to explain it to okay. the member, uh, and that is that I did make it clear after Mr Cos Cosgrove's speech that the matters that he was dealing with that related to his SOP related to part two of the bill and that I wouldn't countenance further discussion uh, on those items as part of the part one debate. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Speaker, I, I do note that the SOP that I have tabled on the bill does make changes to Part 1. Yours does. Do yes, and, it does. And, and Mr. Cosrove's doesn't. So well, I'm, pointing out to the, I'm pointing out to the House that with respect to my SOP that makes changes to Part 1 of this bill is that there is a regulatory impact statement on MB's website. And in that regulatory impact statement, there is a thorough analysis of the options that could be taken, Mr Chairman. Dr Smith. The options are, that could be uh, used in this bill to address the concerns around construction contracts. And if members of the House look at that regulatory impact statement, they will see that in the cost-benefit tests, the options that the government has in its SOP is a more efficient way of dealing with those concerns. Uh, Mr Chairman, I'd say to members uh, of the House uh, that the changes that we're proposing in this bill are sensible. They are changes that will result in a more efficient construction industry. They are changes that will enable disputes in the construction industry to be able to be resolved more quickly. I think the changes in this part that extend the provision of the construction contracts dispute resolution process to residential contracts, those that extend it to include the quantity surveying work, the engineering work and those other provisions the are sensible changes the that the House should support. Sorry? The, officials, the officials say in the regulatory impact statement that the availability and robustness of data and the methodology used to arrive at estimates is unsuitable. Well, the member should take a call. And, an and I, I don't want to, I don't want to offend the chair. I suspect the, the, the part of the regulatory impact statement is the part two debate, and I'd look forward to having a healthy debate on those and why the government's SOP is a far better option than the pretty um, uh, messy SOP that's being tabled by the opposition that would not work. Clear Carroll. Mr Chair, well, um, there certainly are, are 